Okay, so this one's going to be a very cool sort of uh, falling synth sound. I'm going to begin by adding a new instrument, and again another silent. Click OK, and we're going to call this one the plinker, plinker fall, or call it whatever you want. So I'm going to go into their silent again, Apple K to get our keyboard. And I'm going to bring the volume of this back. And I'm going to open silent and initialize the preset, as always. And for our first one, I'm going to, again, be going to use the saw wave. I'm going to add a couple voices to it. Slightly detune them, so that we're just not doubling it up. So get a wee bit of stereo width with it and pan it slightly to the left. I'll push three octaves up. And then I'm going to put it out of phase with, again, another one we're going to add over here. So add again two voices, slightly detune them. Three octaves up. This is where you need to play about with the phase. And then if we put a low pass filter on it, push the drive up. And push some resonance into it. Um, we're going to add a oscillators from part B as well in here, so we'll add A and B. And then we can just turn down mix B because we don't want it coming through, we just want it coming through the filter. So I'm going to open the filter here, add a bit of resonance, turn the warm drive on as well. So we can just about hear it now. I'm going to go into oscillator B, or part B rather, and we're going to add some white noise, just to add a bit of mid-range to it, that makes it a bit more gritty. And then I'm going to add one more saw wave, and we're going to push it up again, three octaves, turn the volume of it down slightly. And then find a different phase for it again. Pan it off slightly to the right. Keep it quite low in volume. It's not making a huge amount of difference to the overall sound. So if we go back to part A, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom now. And for envelope 1, we're going to automate the LFO over here, so we'll set the LFO up first, so we'll go to cutoff, and we'll turn the gain up, and we'll turn the rate up here as well, set it to about half, and we're going to turn the amount up, so we've got that cycling through now, but we're going to change it from a sine wave to a saw wave. So we get that nice sort of clink sound. So we'll leave it at a half for now, and then we're going to go to the pitch on the A and B. And we're going to turn this up slightly, and we'll turn the decay up as well. And then we're going to uh, introduce an amount to this as well. So if we just push this up. And then for the LFO rate, we're going to automate this. So if we click on here, and we'll go to the LFO 1 rate, turn the decay up, and then we're going to turn this up as well. So this is now going to, when we hit the note, it's going to change this rate. So our base rate is a half, so that's what it's going to slow down to, and then this is going to start it off at a higher rate. So you're getting a nice sort of, almost like a rhythm to it there. It's going to bring the white noise back a bit. OK, 
Okay, so that sounds fine. I'm going to push a phaser onto this now. Bring the dry wet back. And just play around with the center frequency and the LFO rate. So you get something that you're happy with. We'll add a bit of a chorus to it as well. Slow the rate down. Gives it a sort of roomy effect. I'm just going to increase that by adding a bit of reverb. Bring the size of the room down. And the pre delay down as well. And the dampness up. So it gives a very quick reflection. Okay, so that's fine there. We're just gonna last thing we're gonna do is go into our inserts and just distort this further by using the the camel crusher. And we'll go to the tube warmth that we had before. And we'll just push the tube control right up. And we're gonna turn the um make sure the compressor's off and we'll bring the volume of this back slightly. So that just adds a bit of distortion to it. And then finally we're going to add a, go to the spatial controls and we're going to use a stereo enhancer. I'm just going to push it right up to 200 and add a bit of a delay effect. So this is, this pretty much makes the, the delay trick that we cover in previous tutorials where you add a, a delay and you make a, a left and right channel for it. So this does the same thing, but only gives you the actual control over the delay time here. And the color just keeps it from um, sounding a bit, uh, get, get sort of the sort of phasing issues. Okay, so I'm going to go and add a bit of EQ to this as well. So I'm just going to push quite a big curve right down at the bottom because there's no real bass in this and we, we want some sort of bass coming through. So we'll do a bit of a spike just down at the bottom. And then we'll add another boost of about three or four, this time in the mid-range. Sounds good there. And then we'll add a massive big spike at the top here. Um, just after where we had our last one, so just adding it across that sort of shelf right at the very top. So just add some nice highs to it. And then finally, we'll go to our sends, send some to our reverence. And then if we quickly draw this in, so it's gonna be coming in to the third part, so the, between bars five and seven. So right here at bar six, where there's no instruments playing, we're gonna draw in our note. And we're gonna go in and add a bit of automation to this as well. So we're gonna to go to our stereo panner, turn the read on, and if we just zoom right in on this, we can do a nice big sweep from the right ear over to the left. We just make our quantize sharper. And then finally, we're just going to drop this into the uh, the bass group track so that we get that sort of uh, compression happening to it. So we just go to the groups and the bass bus. Okay, so that is the plinker falling sound put in. In the next tutorial, we're going to bring in some strings to sort of create a bit of tension behind the whole track. 
sort of a, a bed of strings in there. And then we're going to show you some uh, sort of glitching, con uh, glitching uh, things that you can do on your drums to add a bit more variation to your drum patterns too.